oil price dropped from an average of 100 United States dollars per barrel over the last decade to an average of 40 United States dollars per barrel this year and last. Worse still, the damage perpetrated by Niger Delta thugs on pipelines sometimes reduced Nigeria's production to below 1 million barrels per day against the normal 2.2 million barrels per day. Consequently, the Naira is its weakest, but the situation will stabilize. But this is only temporary. Historically, about half our dollar export earnings go to importation of petroleum and food products. Nothing was saved for the rainy days during the period of prosperity. We are now reaping the wild winds of corruption, recklessness, and impunity. There are no easy solutions, but there are solutions nonetheless, and government is pursuing them in earnest. We are to repair our four refineries so that Nigeria can produce most of our petroleum requirements locally, pending the coming on stream of new refineries. That way, we will save 10 billion United States dollars yearly in importing fuel. At the same time, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and the Central Bank have been mobilized to encourage local production of rice, maize, sorghum, millet, and soya beans. Our target is to achieve domestic self-sufficiency in these staples by 2018. Already farmers in 13 out of the 36 states are receiving credit support through the Central Bank of Nigeria's Anchor Borrowers Program. Kebbi State alone this year is expected to produce 1 million tons of locally grown rice thanks to a favorable harvest this year. As part of the 13 states, Lagos and Ogun are also starting this program. Rice alone, for example, costs Nigeria 2 billion United States dollars to import. The country should be self-sufficient in basic staples by 2019. Foreign exchanges that saved can go to industrial revival requirements for retooling essential raw materials and spare parts. It is in recognition of the need to reinvigorate agriculture in our rural communities that we are introducing the LIFE program. The government recognizes that irrigation is key to modern agriculture. That is why the Minister of Agriculture and Water Resources are embarking on a huge program of development of lakes, earth dams, and water harvesting schemes throughout the country to ensure that we are no longer dependent on rain-fed agriculture for our food requirements. In addition, the government is introducing water resources bill and compassing the national water resources policy and national irrigation and the drainage policy to improve management of water and irrigation development in the country. We are reviving all the 12 river basin authorities, namely Anambra Imo, Benin, Uena, Chad Basin, Cross River, Hadeja Jamari, Lower Benway, Lower Niger, Niger Delta, Ogun Ocean, Sokoto River, Afa Benway, and Afa Niger. The intention is eventually to fully commercialize them to better support crop production, aquaculture, and accelerated rural development. 
This administration is committed to the revival of Lake Chad and the improvement of the hydrology and ecology of the basin. This will tune in with efforts to rehabilitate the 30 million people affected by the Boko Haram insurgency in the Lake Chad Basin countries. The second plank in our economic revival strategy is centered on the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing. The Ministry will lead and oversee the provision of critical infrastructure of power, road, transport, network, and housing development. Power generation has steadily risen since our administration came on board from 3,324 megawatts in June 2015, rising to a peak of 5,074 megawatts in February 2016. For the first time in our history, the country was producing 5,000 megawatts. However, renewed militancy and the destruction of gas pipelines caused acute shortage of gas and a constant drop in electricity output available on the grid. There has been, during the period June 2015 to September 2016, big improvement in transmission capacity from 5,000 500 megawatts to the present 7,300 megawatts. There were only two system collapses between June and December 2015. But due to the vandalism by Niger Delta militants, the overall system suffered 16 system collapses between March and July 2016 alone. As I have said earlier, we are engaging with responsible leadership in the region to find lasting solutions to genuine grievances of the area. But we will not allow a tiny minority of thugs to cripple the country's economy. In the meantime, government is going ahead with projects utilizing alternate technologies such as hydro, wind, and solar to contribute to our energy mix.